What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. And today I'm starting a new series on what was once called the Nuestra Raza Format. And so before I recite it, which I'll do in just a minute, uh, and then in future episodes this week, I'll break it down section by section, the same way that I did when I was incarcerated and I taught this to other people. Uh, but let me clarify. I am not here to advance the agenda of any criminal organization or gang or group or movement or whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, even though that's the context under which I learned it, and I'll get to that in a second, that's not what I'm here doing. Uh, I believe that this has value to everybody. Um, it, it is a carefully worded document. It is a very intentionally worded document. It is not one that advances a gang, right? Um, it actually has value, I think, to all Rasa and other marginalized groups, no matter where you're from. It is inspirational. It has a perspective to it. And so I feel to share it with you guys and, and get your feedback and see what you think, right? It's a bit controversial to do this because some people are going to say, oh, you know, you're exposing. To those, let me be clear. I mean no disrespect, but at the same time, I mean, let's not act like this is some super secret information, right? Um, even without the internet and without the books, the way that education is being done now is, is ragtag in a sense of you got teenagers on the streets learning this stuff, right? Um, which I'm not for or against because it's not my business. I'm just saying times have changed from when I learned it. And so let me address that, you know, quickly and the language that I'll be using in this, because those that are familiar with this document might try to nitpick a little bit, right? And so let me be clear. The NR, Nuestra Raza, right, was developed, and this is very brief, but uh, was developed in the 80s by the big homies up north because the big homies from the north and the big homies from the south were gone and they were in the shoe. And so what was left is northerners and southerners. Southerners vastly outnumbered northerners. That's always been the case in the Department of Corrections. And so the NR was created as a counterbalance to that. Right. Um, still Northerners, but at a different level, so to speak, but not a big one. So that is what it was. And and they were really Northern structure. They started out in the 80s. The official birth date is January 22nd, 1984. Um, and then there was indictments in 92 in Santa Clara County involving Cripple Jerry, uh, who some of you have heard from and others. And then they switched it to Nuestra Raza. And the phrase Nuestra Raza existed within the format anyways. And so I've heard that that might be where they got that from. But either way, they changed the name. They didn't change the, the movement, so to speak. They didn't change its purpose. And it continued on. Um, I was pulled, I was married in 1997 uh, while I was incarcerated. Now, that's the same time that the big guys from up north did away with Nuestra Raza. It didn't exist anymore. Um, that filter took a while to get out. Uh, so I think I heard about around 98, but it could take a year for a filter from the Bay to make the rounds back then. We didn't have cell phones, right? And so nonetheless, though, the, the teaching still remained. They added a little bit to the format, and the format that I'm going to read today has that bit that they added. Uh, it's the most recent one from when I was incarcerated. And I last, you know, I came out of prison, as many of you know, in 2005. And so whatever changes or whatever has been done since then, uh, I'm probably not aware of, right? And, and I definitely am not including in this. The language-wise, though, when they did away with Nessa Raza, they started this Norteño and the Northerner and different statuses, and I'm not going to get all into that. I'm choosing to use the word hermano in place of Norteño or Enzo or bro or, or whatever else, right? Because to some degree, we're all hermanos, not in a clicked up sense, of course, but just relationally, right? We, we have a lot in common. And like I said, I believe this is good for all Raza and other marginalized groups. And so I'm using that word, which is authentic to the format, right? There was a time that the format was taught as the Nuestra Raza format, which as a name doesn't exist anymore. And the word hermano was used in that format, uh, which does not happen anymore. So I'm faithful to the document as I was taught it. Uh, but I think also that language, especially because it's not in use within a gang or, or criminal organization context, is acceptable to all people, 
right? Uh, uh, again, this is not me trying to indoctrinate anybody. I'm trying to encourage and motivate people and kind of shed some light on some of the values and concepts that we had in prison, you know? Um, and there's others that had these same values and concepts that, that didn't fall up under the same umbrella, you know what I mean? And so nonetheless, let's get into it. This is the format and uh, I'll catch up with you guys on the flip side. Our future behind these walls depends largely upon each and every one of us as hermanos. The will to leave old attitudes to the past and the will to adapt to new and more meaningful and fulfilling ideas. The determinations to fight and challenge all those whom oppose our unity and advancement toward equal justice. Let each of us as hermanos recognize the true purpose of our struggle as a close-knit raza. Furthermore, let us also be the enlightenment and inspiration of others behind the walls that stand victims to the prejudice and abuse of the misused authority within the penal system. Advancement demands change. It is each hermano's responsibility to promote unity amongst our own kind, as well as any other raza in need of our guidance, assistance, or our moral support. A true believer of our struggle is to be treated with dignity and respect on all levels. The purpose and goals of hermanos behind the walls is to establish a strong positive attitude for himself as well as for the raza and any other minorities in such need. It is apparent that within an hermano struggle for better educational opportunities, social respect and equality, there exist those who are of the same heritage and background who, for their own selfish reasons, create obstacles and work alongside other group segments that are contrary to the people's struggle. These degenerates are known as bandidos, who strive upon their own people's hard work, sweat, and blood. Within our struggle, there is no room whatsoever for the bandidos or their kind. Those who seek to destroy and undermine our raza's efforts to rise above their standards of living have, through their own actions, made it possible for us and other groups like us to come together, henceforth presenting a strong united front. It is urgent that the hermano understands his duties and responsibilities and at the same time asserts and anticipates the many sacrifices we will all come to endure at one time or another. Many of us will make it to the streets and some will eventually return, while others will not make it for a very long time and still others will never make it beyond these walls. However, while we are on the inside, we must establish a strong foothold in all pintas for all those who remain and all those who shall return. Our foremost and ultimate goal is to eventually establish a strong front in all pintas where one is able to do his time and enjoy all the advantages and privileges that make existence behind these walls a more bearable one, while at the same time expanding one's area of need, such as education, vocation, and other necessities essential to our future accomplishments. It is stipulated that the hermano struggle is not in any form of prison gang or organization. Once a member of our struggle leaves to the streets, he takes with him better mental strength and knowledge he gained from his educational endeavors and a keen sense of direction in life. The hermano's label identification or identity as in the pinta does not exist on the streets, rather solely his origin and citizenship. The struggle on the streets will of course be on a much greater scale and will basically follow the same concepts. To fully succeed in our cause, the investment of hard work and time will be much. There will be stumbling blocks in the midst of our past, but through this, we shall allow our setbacks to serve as experience, and experience will be the spirit that puts the fire in our hearts and minds for our future accomplishments and victories. To fully accomplish our set goals and objectives, all hermanos must function on the same level of awareness and discipline. This involves following the 14 bonds, rules, and regulations adopted for all hermanos as all fronts must function on the same level. There you have it. In my opinion, this is a beautiful document, and not because I was affiliated with the organization that created it, but because it inspires and it motivates and it empowers. And I believe that it does that or has the capacity to do that to all people, regardless of race or ethnicity or geography or, or affiliation or anything else, right? Because at the end of the day, we're all people. And many of us are people who struggle, right? Who fight against oppress oppression, who struggle for betterment, who want to see better for our communities and ourselves. And so that's what this is for. That's what these forthcoming lessons are gonna be about. 
Uh, if you have any feedback, of course, leave it in the comments. Check out the other content. There's a variety of it here. And then stay tuned because I expect this to be daily uh, throughout the rest of this week. Help others move in excellence. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time and help your community.